Hi, everybody. Welcome to Squared Up. I'm Bill Swinford. And I'm Monica Daniels. You're following us on the Swinford Media Group, and we appreciate that you're doing that. It's great to be back with you. Um, Swinford Media Group, publisher of the Marion Star, Heron Independent, Carterville Courier, Mm -hmm. and owners of the several uh, social media sites, including the WFCN page that has gotten a lot of attention here in Southern Illinois and um, keeps you up to date as much as we can with the region's news. We'll talk a little bit about the region's news today, but first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing mostly, mostly okay. I have noticed lately that my clothes are cutting me in half, so I'm going to have to go on a diet, I think. <laughs> so you're a little uncomfortable. I am so uncomfortable. I'm oh. really uncomfortable. So it's salads for me, I think, for a while. Okay. Well, thanks for just sharing that. And, <laughs> and also, uh, you look great. And um, I'm not feeling great. And, and, you, and, and, and you couldn't tell it by looking at you. So I'm feeling like I'm about ready to get severed. Okay. Well, we'll, but, we'll try to get you through this. Yeah. So you can get your sweatpants on. <laughs> what, what have you got to do? Thanks for joining us. We actually went to the Murfreesboro Apple Festival last night. We, we had did. some. We had we had some apple coffee cake. That might have something to do with it today. Maybe it was the apple the apple coffee cake. Um, it could have been and all that fair food I had last night. But wasn't that so fun? It was really fun. That it was just it was very. They had a band that was that was playing. That kind was like really, a folk quartet playing last yeah, night. It was a really fun band and they had a lot of, um, since it's an apple festival, they had a lot of unique bakery goods all around apples and the apple coffee cake was one of them. It was really delicious. And we had a brisket horseshoe, yeah. um, which I don't know if you know what a horseshoe is, but you have your open like an open face bread and then you've got your meat on top then you have your french fries on top of that and then it's covered in cheese right and then <laughs> <laughs> why aren't your clothes fitting i'm not I'm sure what's happening here it was the fair food and then you've got your we we pulled out the barbecue sauce we had what sweet rays barbecue sauce oh, drizzle man. that so over good. the top so good. Yeah. But we did split it instead of having each of our own, which I think kind of helped. Yeah, you said we were going to split it. I think you split. ate most of it, and that might be what's going on. I, I need happening. to run around with both of you, too, because that way I would have an excuse for why I've gained weight. <laughs> well, that's like, just but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you start splitting two. it three ways, and that would probably be better for all <laughs> well, of us. Well, it's right? like you guys have become the taste testers of everything that's oh, going on around the area lately. Absolutely. That's Man, true. wow, that's good, though. <laughs> yeah, no, it is good. It is but you know, carnivals are fun. It was all you don't want to miss carnival. Up at no, night and... and it's always healthy food, so you know how that is. <laughs> I, I did pass <laughs> on the deep fried Twinkie, and I did, oh. and I passed on the deep fried Oreo. No, I was re- kind of regretting it, but today when I when I got dressed, I was like, it's probably a good thing that I passed on that. So we're recording this yeah. on Friday the thirteenth. Oh, Friday the thirteenth. I didn't even realize today's Friday. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, well, uh, but you're not watching this on Friday the 13th. We'll be posting it probably after the Apple Festival is over. So sorry if you missed it. Um, One of the other things we noticed, we noticed this on another trip to Murfreesboro, is that they put the chairs out on the side of the road and they kind of chain them down. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like outdoor lawn chairs and things that they kind of up and down on the main street there in, I think, is that Walnut, I think, in Murfreesboro? Mm -hmm. And right. they line the street and they kind of rope them to, you know, light poles and things. And they're just basically, you know, um, claiming their spot for the big parade, which happened on Saturday. And I'm told that starts happening like early August uh, that that happens. And that's uh, that's dedication. Those <laughs> are the people that love a parade. Yeah, all these light chairs were out. People were all marking. up and down. They're saving their spot. Yeah. They even had them like chained so they couldn't get stolen or maybe the wind pick them up or something. I marched in that parade a few times back in the day. It is a great parade. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's still a great parade. I haven't seen it in years. But um, so Murfreesboro, good job. Good job with that Apple Festival. Let's keep that keep that going. Uh, how great that was. Here's some something exciting that's happening this week. Mm-hmm. Bricks are being laid on Tower Square. And even better, they're being laid in front of my office. My quadrant of the square on, on the it's the northeast corner is uh, getting the bricks first, and they are going down, and they are going to be done this week on my quadrant of the square. My quadrant of the square is going to be a hundred percent complete, and within a month here, the whole square will be complete. Everything that we've been waiting for it's get prettied up will be, and it already <laughs> looks great even right now because yeah. they've got all the lines painted. 
they've got all they've got a lot of vegetation that they've brought in and um, filled the uh, filled the different areas of the square and and uh, doesn't that look great? It does. Yeah, it's going to be worth it. We'll and it was it was there. great to have that for the Veterans Weekend that we had uh, a week ago, where um, we had our Veterans on Parade, which was the 20th anniversary. You can read about that in in uh, the, the editions of the of our papers that are out on newsstands right now. Um, again, Ed, Ed Davis and his committee did another great job with another Veterans on Parade. And then the special Freedom Sings, Marion Stands with Veterans concert that happened mm-hmm. on Saturday evening, which we enjoyed very much. We did, yeah. It was it was nice seeing the veterans get um, just loved on like that and mm-hmm. encouraged and all the people that turned out to support the veterans. and Some amazing songs written yeah, in two days' time. I mean, there were some hits that were being played. I think yeah. they could make it on on um, the radio. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so too. And, and, uh, just the fact that these songwriters didn't even know the veterans, mm-hmm. you know, two days prior to performing songs that they'd written with them over that two day period. It's called a freedom sings retreat. Freedom sings USA is an organization based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We've told you about it a few times on here, mm-hmm. but it was everything that Martin Parsons and his wife, Akami and everybody mm-hmm. had played it up to be and good on them. Good on mayor Absher and his team for pulling off a wonderful event on, on Tower Square. Oh, yeah. So we've got a few other things I wanted to point out. I'll just run through quickly what else is in our papers that I don't want you to miss. Of course, Chick-fil-A is now open, mm-hmm. joining uh, Kane's um, Chicken right mm-hmm. there uh, in the on, in the, on the west side of Marion. Chick-fil-A has opened. The lines were crazy. But I had a chance to go to Cane's because Chick-fil-A was busy. Uh, I went over there. This was yesterday. Yeah, right. And I said, listen, this is great. I said, because I finally got to go. They said, that's what we've heard all day long. So, Yeah. Well, you know what what I saw on social media was a photo of the Cane's people over celebrating with the Chick-fil-A people. Yeah, I love that. Isn't that cool? (laughs) Yeah, that is really great. Really really encouraging that idea of, of community support, right? Absolutely. That there's enough to go around. And I, I, uh, I appreciated that very much. A couple other things. We want to give a shout out to Carterville. Uh, Carterville is upgrading their water system, and I know they've been waiting on this uh, USDA loan to go through, and it's it's been approved, and they are putting in um, some new storage capacity that will get them up to 1.5 million gallons, which means they'll have three days' worth of water storage, which is going to be huge because the town, anytime something goes wrong with the water system, they kind of got to shut it down because they – they can go through all of their water storage right now in a, in a single day. And so this will give them three-day storage. So uh, shout out to the Carterville City Council, Mayor Brad Robinson, and all of those who worked hard to make that happen. That is That work is underway. Without right now any kind of – there's not going to be any, any water rate increases to go along with it due to this loan that the city was able to get. So good on them for that. Hunting and fishing days coming up at Johnny Logan College. Real soon, September 28th and 29th, the end of this month. Have you been to that before? I have not. It's a great event, Tom. You've been there? I have been there, yeah. In fact, even with the grandkids and things, that's that's a great little event. So really where, like where do you go fishing at? Well, there's actually a, a great pond at, at Johnny Logan, and they've got it stocked, and, and you get to what, fish there. What kind of fish are in there? They have fins. They, yeah, oh, right. Fin kinds. It's the kind that swim underwater. <laughs> um, that's about all we know. Yeah. Happy. Probably. There you go. Um, Maybe yeah. bluegill. Bluegill, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've caught a few bluegill in my day out of the Mississippi River. Cats? There may be some cats in there. Catfish? I don't mm-hmm. I doubt it. It's, it's mm-hmm. not my favorite. Bass? Do they, you think they have no, bass I, in there? No, I bet. I did like the bluegill. Trout. <laughs> trout. That's just all. That's just, that's <laughs> the, they have every kind of a fish we can come up with. Piranha? Probably not. not <laughs> no, no piranha. Um, so oh, look, that but, just takes but the there's, fun out I mean, it. it's more than just fishing. I mean, it's it's yeah. great for the kids to go and you can that you can like rent a pole and fish and that's cool. Yeah. They have exhibits and all kinds of things that are there. You get to keep food? What you there's catch? there's food there too. Do it. Is, is it what kind of food is it? Kind of like the stuff fish? you've been eating lately. You know all the things you guys have been eating, so it'll just go right with your palate. <laughs> yeah, don't worry right. about it. Yeah, exactly. fair food. <laughs> fair food. It's kind of like that. I mean, a lot of food trucks. Uh, and Biscuits. my favorite thing is always where they have the jumping Biscuits. dog, the dog that dives, yeah. that that dives in the water. Have you seen these before? Where they yeah. they run out and they can see see who can jump the farthest. The always a lab, always a lab, always a retriever that's yeah. jumping okay. out there and and like catching something in the air and landing in the water. It's fun to watch. Oh, that's my favorite thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's coming up the end of September, the twenty eighth and 29th. 
Um, homecomings are happening all around the region. Carterville's was last week. Heron's is uh, October 3rd, 4th, 5th-ish. Marion's is down the line as well. Um, well. Also wanted to shout out the Pichard Foundation, uh, based at John A. Logan College. Joe and Glenn Pichard have just marked 25 years of helping abuse children. They're great friends to us here at Swinford Media. Over that period of time, they have given away $10 million oh, wow. to local children's charities awesome. and organizations that help children. So shout out to them. Of course, they've done wonderful things in many ways for Southern Illinois through the years. Absolutely. And this is just one of many. Um, okay, I rushed through all of that because I want to have enough time to dive into your book today. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Well, let's let's tell them what the book is. It's been a couple okay. of weeks since we've had it. We're doing Who Switched Off Your Brain, Solving the Mystery of He Said, She Said by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. We've been going through the differences in the way the man, the men's brain is made and the woman's brain is made and um, just kind of bringing it into a conversation to be a point of how it is meant to be complementary and not a point of conflict. Oh. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway. I know you're explaining that to Bill as you're going I'm along. Trying, <laughs> I'm trying to keep this in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's go into Chapter 7. It talks about hearing. He hears the boom. She hears the footsteps. So we're talking about um, this chapter talks about hearing sensitivity and um, a tone, the tone of the voice. I don't know if that's ever been a topic of conversation for you or not. Oh, uh, yes. Why did you have that tone? Yes, tone what and volume. You talking about. <laughs> yes, famous for um, tone and volume. Where um, the men may have more of a tendency to turn things up and mm. women might want to turn them down. Oh, just in, in, in like, like, like TVs and things. Television, mm -hmm. yeah, watching TV and men, women. Men, men, men deal with loud better than women, I think. Yeah, I think times. you're right mm -hmm. about that. You know, and Until then, you get to my age, then you just want everything turned down, right? <laughs> <laughs> I found that to be true lately. It's it's We, we choose our destinations based on how loud it's going to be there. You can't hear the other person talking across from you. You can, right. Yeah. You know, it used to be you wanted that loud... You know, the music, you were the one making all the noise. Yeah. And now it's kind of like, you know, I'll go to a concert, somebody who I really like, and I'll go, that was so loud, I couldn't even hear it. Yeah, you know? and it's because all those years of loud that yeah. we've allowed into our ears that yeah. we have too much damage to even be able to, to focus on anything else but the loud. Right. Okay, Squirrel, go ahead. So tone has, I think tone has come up between us before, at least once, where I was a little bit. What really, is that supposed oh, to mean? I was being a little too sensitive. It's like, oh. where did that tone come from? What was up with that tone? And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you can ha you have tones yourself. Yeah, but I'm sure I do. I, I, I appreciate all your different tones. So. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, you don't you don't seem to like all of my tones. Um, I I do. I like all. I I'm just curious about your tones. That's, yes, I may want. You're learning my tones, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what they do and don't mean. Exactly. Right. So. Yes. You're reading into the tones, right? I think, in my, <laughs> from my opinion, I've gotten I've gotten a long ways in not reading into things, but I'm okay with asking questions, you know, so I can explore and learn, you know, and so I I don't think I make assumptions if I hear a tone like oh you're thinking this like but I may ask you, <laughs> like what was so what was going on with that tone you know so I can learn where the tone is coming from. You know, the interesting thing is when it happens and like weeks later, it's like it's like you said something a certain way two months ago and oh, she's been carrying this around for months and then she decides to ask and I and then I really don't know what she's talking about by that time because it's so... Is that, is that the one when it's like, oh, oh, why are you saying that? You said that before, like three weeks ago on a Monday at two, two, yeah. two in the afternoon, right after lunch. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, that yes. was it. That's that's yeah. that's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> so never yeah. heard that. <laughs> so I do feel like I just ask. I ask personally. I don't. I yeah. don't assume. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so guys have to allow the ask. Okay. Uh -huh. That's one of the things that I've I've had to really grow on is just to not. And you you just said it yesterday that I'm pretty fragile, and I can be a little fragile in that uh, you might point out something or say something or ask something. 
that um, that I have to just just allow that that's part of the the process, the learning process, the understanding process. It's mm -hmm. not it's not implicating or or and and that's been a, that's been a tough thing for me in my life. So just yeah, just take it you know take it at face value and don't read like you said don't read everything into it. Um, uh, but I love you know when it comes to actual tone right i love the sound of your voice i think probably some of our listeners will feel the same way you have a very soothing way of talking that's very soothing to the savage beast and i can be a savage beast so thank you for that you're welcome we were just talking <laughs> we were just talking about your radio voice or because yeah. you have some radio tv training i do that uh you uh, once had a you said you once had a radio voice i did um back in the day and when i was still in college i was in radio tv and i had my radio voice was down and i could just get behind a microphone and turn it on but i don't really think i have that anymore i have to find that radio voice to rediscover it mm -hmm. and i don't know if a radio voice would be the right place for a podcast <laughs> We need Tom's expertise on this too, because he's had some radio training. Mm -hmm. You have had radio. Have training. you ever seen that skit they do on SNL where uh, the women, um, <laughs> yeah, the women are <laughs> the doing, podcast. What, what what the they're uh, like podcasters and they're trying to be like a um, what what do you call it? It's almost like public radio. Yeah, right. That's what it is, and they're always doing stuff, and yeah, and they just talk, they just talk like that, and, and they just kind of oh, that's gotta, interesting. You got to walk a line between being tooth yeah. soothing. <laughs> And, and people are going to fall asleep. And oh, not soothing. That's enough. really interesting. <laughs> I had no idea. Really, you know. So that's what. Yeah. So the FM so voice. I, I like to yeah, call that. Right, the FM. right. And I think something about my radio voice was kind of like, like, well, alrighty then. It's a cool, crisp Friday morning, mm -hmm. and it's going to warm up to a balmy ninety degrees as we are in those crazy Southern <laughs> Illinois up and down. Going into fall temperatures, and I just not to this. date that, but that sounds like new wave Valley Girl, and it was cool. Yeah, I mean that was alrighty like then. yes, alrighty uh, then. Yeah, Robin was it Robin Williams? He kind of had that Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. it was sort of a <laughs> good morning. I sort Vietnam. of took yeah. a little bit from his character. Good morning Vietnam. Well, alrighty then. Man. It's a cool crisp <laughs> Friday morning. It's gonna warm up to a. In a, I don't know. Like, like I said, like I had it down back in the day, but I'm gonna have to find it again. Pull it's, it back did you do up. mornings? Um, yeah, I did. Would get up and do um the morning radio. Yeah, because that the, that's really the thing. The students because you're trying to wake people up. Yeah, that's hard. And I'm and I'm more the midnight guy, the Wolfman Jack. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I my brother actually uh, studied radio, TV, and worked in radio for years mm -hmm. and years and years, and and. Over time, his voice became his radio voice. You talk to him still to this day, and that's just that's that's just it. And the guy can, that guy can talk you under the table. Right. <laughs> he's, he's really yeah. he could really carry out a conversation. But he he has a great he has a great voice and a great way of talking. I know a lot of people enjoy because he's yeah. trained in it. Tom, what yeah. what kind of training would you have had? I think mine started forty two years ago, literally two weeks out of high school. Yeah, I went around banging on doors in Memphis, Tennessee. I wanted to work in radio. And uh, they're like, sure, kid. And um, so what was interesting is my dad's from Middle Tennessee. He talks like this. Mm. And I knew all the Southernisms and everything else. And, uh, and But he had a lot of expression. Now, my mom was from Omaha, Nebraska. And so I kind of put the two together where my dad, I took my dad's expressions and then my mom had that straight Midwestern clean diction yeah. and all my cousins. And I remember that I, I worked at it very hard and there's a lady who took me under her, her wing. She was only just about five years older than me. But uh, one of the places I got to go was at a radio station in Memphis called WRVR. And I sat in the room with her. I'd never seen what people do in radio. And they let me go in. And because I kept knocking on the door, can I work at your radio station? They're like, no. Let me show you. Why don't you go sit with Maxine and see how you do it? And so she actually started critiquing me, and then she got me at a campus radio station at the University of Memphis. And that was the summer between I started college and that. Mm -hmm. And how it happened was, this is my long, short story. I wind up, um, all, the, all the students left during the summer, so it's summer break. 
they needed people to occupy the radio station. So I had a guy said, listen, hey, if you want to come here work six, seven days a week, it's for free. I need somebody in the afternoon, three hours in the afternoon. And literally this guy brought me in a control room and he said, that button does that, that button does that. I'll see you in three hours. And I was on the air. And this was back when you played records and things. Right. I had no idea how to cue up a record. So yeah. you hear the needle drop. I, I've got the microphone on, didn't know how to turn it off. And so I was talking on the phone, answering it. I think probably about 300, two, 300 people listened to that because it didn't go very far, <laughs> but maybe 10. But I did that for an entire summer. And then I begged to get an internship at one of the top radio stations in town. And I got it in, in the following September. And I started working there. And within, I guess, three months by the end of the year, I was literally working at a radio station. And that's how I started. And you just kind of developed an ear for yeah. what, what was what was the, the... However, I had people critique me. I, yeah. I literally would have these individuals who were on the air would tell me, here's what you need to do. And I began to understand formats and how you do it. All the way down to the way you speak. You spoke yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Back mm -hmm. when I was in school, the Midwest dialect was the standard yeah. across board. So that still helps. is, still For, is per se. Is it still? Okay. Yeah. Ex so. Except the different was, it was weird. Um, they would ship individuals like myself that were from the South that kind of got the Midwest dialect. They would ship us up North to do country radio. And then we would ship what we would call the Yankees down South to do rock and roll and, and adult ah. contemporary. Yeah. So it was always the joke because it, part of it was you wanted, with the country back in the day, you want a little bit of a twang kind of, but you wanted, instead of saying I, you wanted I, mm -hmm. but it, you might say, hey, hey y'all, uh, different things than not, hey you guys. Right. So you had to learn that. I had to learn the difference between, you know, we called everything Coke there and up here it was soda pop or pop or something and and you know south you don't say that so you had to learn and like the difference where you like if you live from chicago you say rough instead of roof and uh, i had a guy that came from chicago and he kept calling a roofing company a roughing company and <laughs> you need something on your rough and I'm, we're like no and it's a roof it's roof so you had to learn different <laughs> yeah. you know ways we say things and different i like yeah i think that's an important country. part of any kind of broadcasting oh, yeah. is knowing your area learning the the town names learning you know, like familiar like here, names. this right. this was just bizarre hey. i felt like i was back in tennessee when i came to southern illinois yeah. nobody pronounces anything correctly yeah no that's right right you know that's that's true there are a lot of towns vienna by Cairo, uh, Cairo, yeah. right? There's so many, so many places like that around here that that people need to need to learn. But it is kind of insulting to the locals if you if you don't learn to get those things right. I I do have a great admiration for people uh, in radio that because um, I saw my brother in action sometimes, and you not only are keeping the dialogue going and and tra transitions and and things and and staying on the clock and paying attention to the time. Uh, and you're kind of engineering the whole thing at the same time, and you're also trying to be interesting, right? You're trying to trying to fill and and uh, and be able to do the the readings and and uh, just the off the cuff stuff that you do. So I, I have a great admiration for anybody that's that's done that. I'm curious if you have if you have a favorite radio personality that you love from your past. Um, why don't you uh, let us know that? Why don't you get on the comments and and chat us, especially some of these local folks. That have meant a lot to you. We were talking about Jerry Bryant just the other day, yeah. host of Jesus Solid Rock, yeah. and that was a, a show that was one time syndicated around the world, and it was based out of WCIL in Carbondale. And then he went off and and did ministry with Keith Green for a time, and then he came back and did it some more here uh, locally. Jerry Bryant's got a great voice. I love his. I mean, perfect for that nine o'clock, nine p.m. Sunday night <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, slot that he had for Jesus Solid Rock. Soothing. Yeah, right. Yeah, ready to go to bed, start your week. And then you have other you have other folks. I mean that that there's just so many different styles. There's not like necessarily a locked in style. You can have that very professional sounding voice, but you don't have to to be in radio. Sometimes the personality coming through your voice mm -hmm. is just as important. Uh, the gentleman Bill White, who was one of the songwriters at this event the other the other night, he's in the broadcaster Nashville Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Not just not. He's an amazing songwriter. He's written some great songs, but he's also just this amazing radio personality. He tells some great stories, and it really comes through. He was very, very interesting, and yeah. and, uh, and enjoyed that a lot. So again, come on, come on the uh, um, comments, and and let's give a shout out to some of these folks. Tom Mann's one of them, but but right. some of the others that have 
uh, you know, filled some some uh, time in our lives, uh, company us on on drives and and uh, and been there for us early morning, late at night uh, through the years. There have been some great folks even here in our region um, through the years. Yes, and we did have some comments on our last podcast. Oh yeah, so yeah, our last comment, <laughs> our last podcast, um, we were talking about song lyrics that people misunderstand, <laughs> yeah. and we went through a, a slew of them, and we had a couple of folks. Uh, more than a couple that commented on this, but I'll share a couple with you. Um, somebody replied, this is Suzanne Boren. Okay. This is, this is a, a common thing. I think she said, I, she said she loved this discussion. She said, my song that I misunderstood some of the lyrics for, for years is surfing USA beach boys. The line is a bushy, bushy blonde hair do. Okay. But my brain thought it was a bushy, bushy bond Flynn. Okay. <laughs> What is that? What? what? Nothing. Where did that word come from? I have no idea. <laughs> but that's a, I think that's a common thing is like we learn the lyrics to these songs and we don't understand something. Yeah. So we just make up something that doesn't even have to be a real word. I think my favorite one was the Kenny Rogers. Oh, yeah. So that's another one. <laughs> it's a fine time to leave me Lucille. But someone was hearing it as it's a fine time to leave me loose wheel. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's... You have this picture in your head. You're driving and this loose wheel just this actually take off. Down <laughs> yeah, that's around. Alicia Shepard. That, that, that was a funny story that she shared with us. I think she said her kids were were singing it that way. If it to find time to leave me loose wheel. <laughs> yeah. I, that was a good one. So, um, so again, you know, get on the comments if you still got some others of those that you'd like to share. That was on our last podcast mm-hmm. if you want to want to um, uh, experience that conversation that we had. Now, the other thing I wanted to discuss today, this is a very important topic to me, is this is a kind of a milestone um, for us um, this week, mm-hmm. and that this is the first podcast that I've done wearing a hat. Yeah, you, yeah. Actually, it's the second one. Is oh, it? this is the second, <laughs> well, but, because well, one, I had one the of fireman's your own orig- helmet. Yeah, you had your own origination. Oh. This, this one is your original, though. Yes, Okay. Uh, so that was a helmet. Yeah. So kind of the same thing. That was the day when Monica wasn't here, if I remember. Is that correct? No, I was here. I was in the back. Yeah. Oh, I was okay. sitting back there with Abby. Oh, that's yes. right, because she didn't want to be with us because I think Bill had that hat on. Yeah, so because I had the helmet, she wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, I can't we were, no, we were discussing. No, we were discussing Tom's yeah. um, work in yeah. with fire departments, and yeah. that was the whole purpose of it. But this is your original hat. This, this is, is a this is hat. this is my own hat, which uh, became my own hat this week because it's a gift I, from you. I bought it. For yeah, you? yeah, we're having a sixty-five percent off sale, and this adorable polo teddy bear hat was on sale in the shirt. So both picked them up for you. Both. Real polo. Real polo. As opposed to fake polo. Okay, this is the this is the problem. <laughs> so Monica would maintain there is fake polo and there's real polo. I yeah. have polo shirts. I've had several polo shirts. Yeah. I have a um uh and uh you say they're not real. Yeah, the USS US yes USA polo or something. Yeah, I know. I, I bought those cheap, those before cheap ones. Yeah, yes. those real cheap. Like <laughs> the only difference is they're 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 not polos. ridiculously expensive. Uh, other than that, they're great quality <laughs> shirts, and they say polo on them. Matter of fact, there's a polo guy on it. Yeah, but it's not the real polo guy. It's How do you know? It's How a, do you know it's not the real polo guy? Real. Listen, the U.S. Polo Association. I looked this up. The U.S. Polo Association was established in 1891. It's like Munsingwear, Izod, all those. They they have real logos, mm. and that one. The, it, you look at the other one; that's not exactly the same. Okay, come on, tell us your tell us your. So the U.S. Polo Association was founded in 1891, established long before this other brand, uh, which came out around in the 60s. Ralph Lauren is that polo? Yeah, it's also yeah. it's it's a it, yeah it is also a polo branch of the polo. It's uh, the Ralph Lauren. Is another branch of the polo? Yeah, this is the same company. There's polo and there's Ralph Lauren polo. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So both of those are legitimate. Those are yeah. They're... But the U.S. Polo Association, which has been around since 1891, yeah. gets the Ralph Lauren is even gets no respect. Than the... Gets no respect. It doesn't. Um, and uh, yet, um, it's still going. And uh, I have three shirts in my closet that I'm no longer allowed to wear. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> You which three? You, I, I thought you just had two. No, which if, so if I took all three of those and I and I and I and I and it's probably still less expensive than the retail price would have been on this shirt if you paid 
So you pay the normal price. Monica's dressing you, and I think it's a good idea. Really? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, it helps. I, I get dressed. It, it has it has an edge, like, right? It has a little bit of a... Has an edge? Like a extra, a little extra. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You just let us know in the comments. She could have gotten you a howdy doody hat, but she didn't. I've been dressed many ways. Yeah, that's true. I've been dressed many ways on this podcast. Um, but yeah, I feel, you know, I, I feel, and I'll say this, my clothes are not cutting me in half as you've mentioned yours are. <laughs> so true. I'll say that. Um, but, uh, I, uh, um, I, I know how uncomfortable you must be sitting there. So we'll start to wrap this up. Okay. okay. Do you have anything else that you want to share with our listeners slash viewers on Squared Up today? Oh, uh, I think, I can't think of anything. Tom? What else do we have? Anything else? No, I think we've covered a lot of things today. We, so we, we've, we've done well. We burned through some stuff. And, yeah. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed listening and watching. Again, uh, let us know who your favorite radio hosts are. We'd love to give them a shout out on our next podcast. We want this to be interactive. We want this to be a conversation, not just a one way. We'd love to hear from you. If you if you send us a comment, we're going to we're going to read it, we're going to share it with each other, <laughs> we're going to just have a ball with it. So, uh, keep that keep that going. Um, and thanks for bringing your book again. That's always an interesting way to, you know, launch a conversation. It's a peacemaker, right? Is it? It is. In I some like ways. It. I think it is. Okay. I think it's good. I learned a lot. It makes me think about a lot of things. Yeah. That tone, you know? key is let's all have a lot of grace for each other. Or yeah. at least knowing you're not alone. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Hey, and before I go, one last thing I want to say is um, I went to a few different veterans events over the weekend, and, and Tuesday was another honor flight into mm -hmm. Veterans Airport. Gosh, there are just so many people that support our veterans here locally, and they just do beautiful work, and they pull off great events. But some of the folks – are just faithful in being there. And I thought after we got to about the third or third event, I was like, well, these folks just keep coming out. And they just really want to make sure that our veterans feel affirmed, feel appreciated. And some of them, as we as we heard spoken at the concert, such uh, in this case by Dr. Bill uh, Chenault that was at the, at the concert, some of them didn't have that experience back in the day, Vietnam especially. Yeah. Uh, it was a tough, tough situation coming home uh, for those veterans. So how great it is that that uh, they're getting their due. I have to say one thing I've, I've done in the past, I've done spots and things for the honor guard. Mm -hmm. But my 93-year-old father passed away just a few weeks ago, yeah. and they came out. And not only you had the regular um, Army soldiers that were there, but... Those guys came out and just did a wonderful job. How great. And, and it's just wonderful. It's really good, and I appreciate because they volunteer. They do all these things, honor flight. You have the honor guard. You have all these things and all these yeah. veterans. And they do a wonderful job, and especially for the families. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great thing. Sometimes I, I those honor guards, all. sometimes oh, those honor guard gentlemen are going from graveside to gra graveside. All weekend long. Yeah, they they uh, they stay busy, and and – and on the hottest of days oh, sometimes, yeah. and they are out there being faithful to um, their calling and being faithful to their fallen uh, comrades. And, and uh, how, how great is that? Again, um, there are just so many, you know, we were mentioning the songs that were written. Allison Hassler, our friend, mm -hmm. had a song that uh, was, I believe, titled, the song written for her was, was titled Walk On, referring to the walking wounded. She was she's one of the walking wounded who was left, you know, after the after the fact, dealing with the fact that she lost several uh, of her unit members during her time in Iraq, and uh, dealt with survivors' guilt, uh, dealt with that pain, the mental anguish that comes with that, and that I think for the rest of your life, you you on some extent deal with that. But they they are are faithful in that. They are telling the story and keeping the memory alive, and and walking on and and um, honoring those that have fallen by living their best life they can live um, under the circumstances, the best life that they can live in honor of those that they lost, um, and uh, and dedicating it to them. I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us and being with us on Squared Up. Um, we will see you again within the week and have more for you.
I'm Monica Daniels. I'm Bill Swinford, and this is Tom Mann. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Really enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.